Okay, it's time to get things moving, and by that I mean the animation of the car. I'm going to start by adding some code to the test drive method. This will start the animation process by moving the car from where it is at the bottom of the screen to the very top of the screen. I've actually entered that code in the code snippet library, and I've given all the snippets a title begin with test drive. That enables me to enter test drive into the search bar and only display the snippets that are relevant to test drive. Now I'll just drag the test drive snippet into the test drive stub that was created earlier when I added the IB action. You'll notice I get an error when I do that because the compiler can't find a rotate method. I'll add a stub here for that code, and I'll also add the return car and continue rotation method stubs as well. The test drive method takes the car to the top of the frame. The rotate method will then rotate the car 180 degrees. The return car method will take the car back down to the bottom of the frame, and the continue rotation method will rotate the car back to its original position. I'll build and run it, and as you can see, this code moves the car to the top of the screen. Looking at this code if you're not an experienced Objective-C developer might cause you to question your decision to learn to program the iPhone. But it's not as daunting as it looks, and by the time I'm done explaining it, you'll understand how it all works. What you see here is an implementation of an important iOS pattern, block object. But before I get into that, let me explain how animation works in iOS. As I explained in an earlier tutorial, when you set certain view properties, the view is immediately redrawn. What's more, some of the properties can be animated, and the center is one of those properties. The first statement simply computes the new center point of the car. Since the center is a point, I need to give it an x and y coordinate. I'll keep the x-coordinate the same since I want to keep it in the center of the background frame. But as far as the y-coordinate is concerned, I want the front point of the car to be at the very top of the background frame. But if I set the y-coordinate to the top of the background frame, the front half of the car will be off the frame. What I need to do is add one half the car's length to the top of the frame. Notice I am adding it to the top of the frame and not subtracting it. That's because, as I explained earlier, the value of y increases as you go down the frame, instead of decreasing as you are probably used to. With these two values, I construct a CG point by using the CG point make function. The next few lines of code are the block declarations. I want to skip over them for the moment and take a look at the animate with duration message first. When I option double click on animate with duration, I'll see the class reference in the organizer window. As you can see, the first parameter in the animate with duration method is the length of the duration of the animation, and it's measured in seconds. The second parameter is a block object which contains the changes you want to make to the view. In this case, it's the change to the center point that I just computed. The third parameter is another block object that is executed after the animation is done. This is how you link animations. And in this case, it sends the rotate message, which will then animate the rotation of the car. So what are these things called blocks and how do they work? Blocks are objects that encapsulate code that can be executed at any time. They have many of the characteristics of a method and can be method parameters. An increasing number of methods in iOS take blocks as parameters. For example, completion handlers, notification handlers, error handlers, enumeration, sorting, and of course, view animation and transitions. So what's so good about blocks? A couple of things. Blocks are able to access both the method's local variables and the instance variables of the object. You'll notice that I'm assigning the value of a local variable, center, to the car's center property. You also don't have to pass data around, and blocks can modify local and instance variables to pass data back. If you need to change something, there's no API to change, and you don't have to take into account any side effects. So now let's examine the block arguments. In the animate with duration method declaration, the second argument is a block that takes no parameters and has no return value. The third argument is a block called the completion block. That is called after the animation is completed. It has no return value and takes a single Boolean parameter. The parameter indicates whether or not the animation actually finished before completion. That's because animations can interrupt each other, but you won't be using that here. Now let's look at the blocks themselves. The first declaration declares a block variable using the caret operator with the name of animation and has no return value and no arguments. 
Like any other variable declaration, you follow the equal sign with its definition. You use the caret operator again to indicate the beginning of the block literal, the definition assigned to the block variable. The block literal includes any argument names, here there are none, as well as the body of the block which contains the code. This block is passed into the animate with duration message. It simply assigns the center point of the car, and because the duration is set at three seconds, it moves the center point from where it is now to the new value over a period of three seconds. The next declaration is the completion block, and it has no return value, but it has a bool as a single argument. The block literal includes argument names, here we have one, finished, as well as the code of the block. In this block, you simply send the rotate message, which I'll show you in the next tutorial. A technical aside here for those of you who are experienced C programmers. Blocks are similar to function pointers in C, and calling a block is the same as invoking a function pointer, but blocks can access local and instance variables. There's also another way to define a block, and you'll see it quite often, especially if there's only a line or two of code in the block. This is an inline definition of the block, and if I were to comment out the declared blocks and the rest of the code, the inline definition would work the same way as using declared blocks. As you can see, this works just as well, but for now, I'll put it back to where it was. As I said, animation is handled for you completely by the UI view class. You simply send a message to the class to animate whatever it is you want. The UI view class also has a couple other animate methods as well, and I'll leave it up to you to explore those on your own.